All right, we're live. Okay, good morning, everybody. Today is January 10th. We're kicking off the one of the news Dow calls of 2024. Um, myself, DJ, and Lawrence are on stage, and there's a few in the audience, Alan, Miguel, and Lahum. So um let's get started since i recently reset my computer i gotta get the agenda back up here one second um because i checked last night nothing was on it yet I oh added, uh, two things perfect perfect um we have expanding effect foundation workforce and discuss continuing next quarter of farm rewards or not. Uh, DJ, do you want to um, kick that off and, and talk about it? Uh, yeah, sure. Basically, it's just uh, something uh, going off what you said last time in the few minutes we talked together. Uh, I think I heard that uh, Normie was uh, being interviewed, and uh, I was hoping uh, if we could get you know more manpower uh for the effect dev workforce because it kind of seems like we could use it yes jesse's been speaking with noman um because a while ago while he was in school he was actually a part of the effect team um and we already recognized that we need more especially with david going on his big trip so uh, we're bringing him in. Um, I think he was taking a little bit of a holiday during the, the school break, or he is done with school. I forget what it is, um, but Jesse's been talking with him, and that should hopefully start soon. Um, I'll know more in another week um, where he is on this. So, yeah, we definitely need more dev help. Lawrence needs more dev help. And I know Miguel is going to pop in as well. Yeah, so um, indeed, more dev help is definitely uh, necessary here. Um, that being said, uh, V2, uh, we are making good steps, but there's also still many things that still need to be done. Uh, I'm currently more focused on the on the new front end right now, um, building that from the scratch up. Uh, basically, the the whole smart contract stack. Have has been rewritten uh, by Jesse, so I'm also testing that now and make sure everything works perfectly there. Uh, there's the new uh, uh, Python SDK and the TypeScript SDK that we developed. Um, and yeah, um, the TypeScript SDK is also the one that's, that we'll be using in the new front end. Uh, but that being said, we were a bit low, of course, on our dev capacity. So um, yeah, definitely a bit bit help is uh, is needed there. Yeah, I, I spoke with Jesse earlier, and yeah, I think uh, having a position, hopefully Normie can can fill this to be focused more on the data science as well, because uh, uh, I know uh, you've been working on uh, slowly but surely on the, the, the Leon uh, template, right, Rochelle? Yes, yes, Jesse and I have been working on that. Uh, we launched um, a few tasks on it to try the template out ourselves, and we had the um, admin qualifications, so just the two of us could, you know, troubleshoot with it. And uh, we noticed something that in the template that was going to cause quite a big issue with the RAM and kind of uh, cripple the I'll say V1, the platform, how it is right now, um, and potentially the second one. So uh, we're reworking that small part. Um, it was something we didn't expect, but it's it shouldn't be too hard to to finish up um, over this next week, week and a half. So um, I can't wait to put those on um, and open it up. So just that one little fix, and then we should be good to go. Yeah, because I, I envision uh, this will help a lot with, uh, I think, as some people want to call it, marketing when really it's really just building uh, open source templates that help uh, Leon 
uh, complete its uh, data uh, goals. Yeah, I think so. And I, I think we're uniquely poised to really help them out because I don't think they're getting a lot of people doing them um, on their platform. So I can't wait to have it connected to ours and and have so many tasks because it's, it's going to be nice. And what I tried out so far, I mean, I did the task, but I just didn't didn't get it to submit. Um, and then I just didn't submit it because I didn't want all that, you know, funniness set to happen. Sorry for my non-dev technical speak, but um, they look pretty easy, especially when, like, you click the, the um, options, you know, to classify things, you know, the drop-down menus, everything's already in there. So from a worker perspective, um, it should be pretty good. And sort of like, too, who doesn't, you know, doesn't mind getting paid to watch clips on YouTube? You know, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think there's going to be a big trend uh, towards uh, more human analysis in uh, data used in models. Uh, recently, Leon had a, a big scandal because Leon uh, created a big... Uh, data set of scraped images they basically did like a scatter shot collect as many images as you can i think it was like some stanford scientists like analyzed them one by one and they found like some really really bad stuff and so uh there was a scandal about that and i think this is going to be and aside from that there's also the whole copyright like there's various copyright lawsuits being levied upon uh model creators and i'm skeptical if the models themselves can be considered guilty but you i imagine the best safe better safe than sorry would be to not use any copyrighted content within a model like when creating it with data like that would be the only way to be like absolutely like clean because i mean we have an entire world i'm sure some courts would be like no, yeah it's infringement some will be like no it's not and but the best way would be just to have it uh completely uh free of it to begin with Yeah, I think so. But I I mean, look at, at GPT, all of its models data is the entire internet, which is mostly copyrighted. You know, it's it's crazy when you think about all this stuff. But yeah, it's, we as advanced yeah, as AI many is many getting more, many more lawsuits to come up, right? It's uh it's the same with um uh, when GitHub released their Copilot feature to uh, to help developers program, and then uh, a couple of developers just found entire snippets of exactly what they wrote in, in one of their repos, even their private repos uh, that were generated by Copilot for different developers. Uh, so I think there were there were also a couple of lawsuits against uh, GitHub against uh, against copyright infringement. Oh yeah, it's definitely going to be. Uh, Interesting to see, right? To to see, uh, yeah, how how that develops o over time. Uh, but I actually also see um, a big op opportunity there for Effect Force, right? So instead of of relying on material from that's that that has copyright, like I don't know, art or um, or blogs online for, for ChatGPT or pieces of code from from GitHub. Um, yeah, you, you you need to create your own data, right? And that's also something that, that you can do with Effect Force. Creating that, your own unique data set. And I, and I think too, if it's done on chain, you know, through the blockchain, it's all verifiable where it comes from, you know. And I think so, that's a, a major bonus as well. You know, the the training of the AI and, and all the data, it needs to be verifiable, like. When you look at some of these models, it's like, how did you obtain this stuff? Well, you know, if if it's built on the blockchain using humans, it's all verifiable. All right. So there's definitely the a niche that Effect Force can fill. So we need uh as you're working on it, the 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 V two and then also the the various examples of it.
which we can use to help with Leon. So I think we have a pretty solid like goal to work on. Um, so. And yeah, we also can. So. Go ahead. I think V2 will also really help us to to scale, right? So yeah, the first big change we made was basically to go from a more cent centralized system where basically only the transactions uh, and maybe a couple more things were decentralized, but lots of things were still centralized to go into a completely decentralized system. Like Effect Force now works without a backend, completely decentralized. But with that came some scalability problems, uh, some limits that made our lives a bit harder. Um, like the 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 three hundred, I think it's three hundred jobs per per batch limit. Yeah, I hate that. Um, <laughs> that th those kind of things are really annoying, and and the uh, and the race condition with with uh, the reservations was really annoying. Uh, almost impossible to get perfect. Uh, uh, like the front end had to do crazy things to try to avoid it, and then still happens and it became so hard to even figure out where where the problem was um that we thought okay we needed to to redo it um and and and, and re remake how how we are doing it on the blockchain um which i think uh, is gonna turn out really nice it just takes takes a bit more time everything around it we need a new front end we need the new typescript software development kits uh, the smart contracts need, need to be tested uh, the relayer need to needs to be changed. Um, so there's uh, there's yeah there's still we we are we are far with the progress, but there's still also quite some steps that we still that we need to tackle. But once we release V2, I think yeah some some things that weren't possible before in V1 or were just, or were just taking too much time or too much manual work with with reloading batches and splitting up tasks, we can now quickly do on V2 and really start to, to scale up effect force. Yeah, exactly. Like the other day I loaded, um, what was it? Uh, 20 tasks and then the relayer immediately just like locked up. And then, yeah, that was the eighth. And here it is the 10th, two days later. And there's only been four tasks done because it's just, it's a headache. So, um, I'm really excited about the V2 and also we're going to have some unique messaging to that really gets the point across of exactly what our platform is and does and is used for in like one sentence. I don't want to reveal it yet, but um, I think a big thing we struggled with in the past was our messaging and because we had this great product, but we didn't know how to communicate the most simply and clearly to people so they understood and got it. And I think this time around, we we have that. So that's that's something I'm very excited about as well. Yeah, and also uh, like like time and 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 uh, the hype has changed a bit, right? So we 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 even began like really focused on AI. I said, okay, the goal for Effect Force is to train AIs. And then people said, so what what do you mean train AIs? Right? They 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 didn't even understand. Um, that AIs needed to be trained, or at least some AIs needed to be trained with with like input from humans, right? They learn from, from humans. They need feedback. Um, you need data sets. You need structured data sets. Uh, and that whole, yeah, that, that was, uh, especially back when we started, that was a hard sell. But yeah, since the AI hype, more and more people understand to see the need and the power of, of AI. Right, so um, there's definitely a big opportunity for us there again. Um, that's also why we started working on the on the Python library um, that will easily help, uh, yeah, get get more AI related campaigns and jobs on the on the on the on the V2 on the version two network. Yeah, AI has gotten a lot more accessible. Um, you can basically use your own uh, GPU on the models. So it's not something that you need a su supercomputer for anymore. Exactly. Yeah, like we, 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 we've seen some really powerful open source models 
that you can just run on your own GPU, right? And it works. And yeah, it shows yeah, it shows the power of of yeah of, of of structured data sets, right? Such a model could be uh, made on on effect force and trade on effect force, and then you can just run it lo locally on your GPU or or, or on a network of GPUs. That's why I'm really excited about this because now that it's it's so much more accessible, that means that so many more people are going to be needing to train their data sets and, and create their data sets for the things that they're making. Um, it's almost like the everyday person now can jump in and, and do this stuff. So it's opening up, you know, so much more opportunity instead of just, you know, big corporations and universities and, and, and things like that. And I think we're poised to to really have our V2 launch right right when people are really going to be diving into it and using it. So I mean that's that's still what we're working on. You know, we we still meet weekly and we still have you know day-long sessions and and stuff getting all this stuff done in the back end and it's a lot it's a lot and i can't wait can't wait for us to really start releasing some of these things but it's also difficult because like everything is intertwined with each part, you know, it's almost like we're building the whole spider web all at once. You can't start in the middle and go out and out. It's like you have to build all the layers at the same time. It's, yeah, giant spider web with an octopus running eight hands everywhere. On that uh, topic, uh, Lauren, since you're here, I'd like, uh, I'm curious, basically, uh, th there. A kind of like I see kind of a grand design, but I wonder if you can discuss it in the sense that so everyone's aware that uh the team you know has their split time of uh, Nosana right, and of that is the transition to GPU com compute for you know models, and basically since Effect also is focused on helping create the data for the models, is there like a grand vision in play to kind of like do everything or at least have something that can do everything um i'm not sure i fully understand the question but there's definitely um a lot of ways that like uh what what happens at nosana that that can also definitely help help affect right i think yeah like nosana is coming from one end and effect is coming from from the other end so nosana is really focusing on uh, the gpu compute like running ai models so running ai inferences on gpus um but they're not focused at all on um how to get these ai models or um how to train these ai models or even providing these ai models right so it's really about the compute we with effect force uh, are really focused right now at basically creating and training these ai models right and then i think there's some a missing piece in between um and, and it's basically uh what what we once described as phase two right it, it's it's maybe a bit different but it's like Right, so effect force can be used to to train and create models to create structured data sets, um, and then you also need a way to provide AI models or data in an in an open source and decentralized way. So um, yeah, I, I do envision sort of this cycle where you can can like create and train an AI model on effect force, then. Um, there is uh, some sort of uh, a market marketplace, a decentralized marketplace where you can can store your AI model, and you can actually run that on different uh, compute providers. And Nosana could be one of the compute providers where, where you can run those models uh, that are stored on that decentralized marketplace. Uh, that being said, of course, the focus for effect at the moment still is to uh, to first. Make sure that uh, we have a scalable version of Effect Force. 
um, and that we can really use it to uh, to to uh, put more tasks on it, to really uh, train AI models with it, um, to do uh, yeah, to really connect with data scientists. Um, it, it should really be the go-to network for for people that want to structure their data uh, and uh, maybe create AI models and train AI models. And then the next step after that that that's working, yeah, we're gonna look at at um, creating a marketplace to be able to to yeah, to provide people with these AI models. And then it would be great if we can even run them in a decentralized way through a partner like Nosana. And that's like the, the vision that I have in my, in my mind. Yeah, thanks for answering. Cause yeah, I have a similar vision. And uh, yeah, as you said, like there's like just the missing piece of uh, like, I feel like that's what the, the, the f expansions can really help with is that if we can, for example, get a good partner like Leon, which has created the models, uh, that that's kind of like like the missing piece that can help. Because it the the appeal of Leon is that it's also an open source data model creator. It's not like uh, OpenAI where you know all the weights are private, or or rather yeah. all the data exactly. is private. Yeah, exactly. So that that that's a great partner to have, and uh, yeah, if 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 we can partner with them in in like a bigger way and really yeah, provide and create these open source models, and people can run them even in a, in a decentralized way. So yeah, that that would be uh, that that would be great if we can achieve something like that. Hey, Alan, sorry, I just saw your, your hand raised there. Oh, I, I see it now. Alan typed in the chat. A few people in the Telegram are wondering what is happening. It seems like everything has stopped. I'm wondering when we'll be in a position to really move this project forward so we can see a difference. Yeah, that's a valid question, right? Uh, so it's definitely not, not stopped. It's just that we're a bit low on the dev side, of course. Um, but um, we are working hard on version two. Um, and of course, that's been in the works for quite a while. So I, I'll hope everyone bears with us while we're we're trying to complete it and trying to get the the whole cycle ready and all, all the pieces ready so that we can actually yeah deploy and run version and run tests on version two uh, with the new front end and everything. Um, I can't give an exact date on that yet, but it's not like um, we stopped working on that completely. Uh, that's definitely something that's still in the works. And uh, once once we have a more concrete timeline on that, then we'll uh, let you know. Yeah, I I read the speculation in in this stuff, and you know, I don't I don't know how people don't understand that someone can have like two jobs at the same time. A lot of people do it even in the offline world. Um, you know we're all still meeting regularly. We all still work on things, set our own internal deadlines. It's still all the same communication. I don't, I don't understand, you know, why that's so hard to comprehend, but. Well, I wouldn't necessarily you know. say the communication is the same. I've, I've been participating in the Nosana test grid and there's a lot more communication on that side than uh, the effects side. So I can see why people can be a bit uh, uh, frustrated. Yeah, but, but I mean, if you look back, you know, when we had something big actively going on, like the big uh, um, groups of tasks and things where we had tons of workers and people were actively doing things, we were, you know, always bustling with messages and, and, and things like that. We don't have that going on at the moment right now, in well, effect, no. My so, opinion no, is that- completely different. Uh, I think all of you are split time with Nosana, and 
my view is that it will be good to have someone, perhaps Normie, Norman, uh, as a dedicated effect developer. Yeah, and I think that's the, the plan for him. And that I would mean, be great if that's the plan. Because that way yeah. you can also focus on the communication side, right? Yes. <laughs> but uh, like a lot of my like worker communication and, and stuff, it's centered around like when all of it's launched and going, you know, or like the, the right before, you know, the three weeks right before. Um, and part of it is still like incomplete, you know, as we're still fixing and, and designing the V2. Um, well, yeah, the, I don't... there are aspects that definitely have to be you who do it, right, Lawrence and Jesse, like the smart contract side. I mean, obviously, we don't want to hire on someone to work on, you know, the smart contract because that can be like, you know, very scary, right? Just some new person. But the, the, the Leon side, the, the building template stuff, the, the building samples of how to, uh, really use the workforce that stuff can definitely i think be expanded uh with a new manpower i think and that's what i'm hoping is uh, gonna be the the case for the future yeah as alan yeah, said, the, pro the problem is not that we can i do agree change. with you uh it's it's a, it's a valid point right and and of course if if there's uh if there's more people dedicated um to to developing effects and helping here with the communication that would be great and i and but i think that first step like rochelle said is also true right if if we're still developing the v2 um yeah then there's there's not not too much to to communicate at that moment on regards to that i i also don't want to spend too much time on on v1 anymore um because yeah we, we want to switch over to v2 right so it's it's in this it, now in in between periods uh but definitely once uh v2 is launched and when we once we get actual more regular tasks on the platform that needs uh more guidance and more um yeah more communication with the workers as well then definitely we'll ramp up the communications there as well and make sure that uh yeah that we have enough people on board to handle both the development side and the co and the com communication side that's definitely the goal but as i do agree with you uh dj the, mo the more important things are are for me and jesse to be done like the smart contracts the 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 basics of of yeah of of, of the other components that are also needed uh but we can definitely uh have help from from uh, a lot of people to uh yeah to actually help us fit to help us finish it up to help test to help with the communications um so that's a that's all valid points for sure right um so yeah uh alan said his mic is not working so uh he said that the problem is not is not that we can we cannot see much of the work is being it's that ugh, excuse me the problem is we cannot see much of the work is being done and i know you're working on it can you give us some indication on one effect will be in the position to really move forward i know you mentioned earlier it's hard to give a, a timeline on it but uh in more broad way like speaking like of this year i believe in the past it was the first quarter where we thought v2 would be done do you think that's changed or what do you think I don't think that's changed, but um, I will definitely uh, align with Jesse before I actually give like a, a proper timeline on that. Um, as soon as we as we know more more about it, then um, and 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 we're a bit further along, and uh, we have we have, we have properly been aligned on that, then uh, we'll update you with with like a, a rough timeline as well on, on version two. And Alan is typing another message here, so we'll give him a moment. He says, is there any danger of effect getting sidelined for no sauna? No. Oh, my gosh. We've still continued on effect for the last two years, even when no sauna is going on. Um, it's, it's 
two separate projects and we're still fully dedicated to effect. We have some really long days. Um, but that's what happens when you have two jobs. You want to yeah, weigh in so on that, Lawrence? No danger of getting sidelines uh, there. I, I agree with Rochelle. Also, like DJ already um, said, you have you have put a lot of work into it, so you have to see it through. Yeah, I agree, Alan. Uh, yeah, I agree. We have put over the years a ton of work in it, so we're not gonna just let this go, right? Um, that's not in our nature. Um, and also, like DJ already said, there's definitely possibility to, uh, yeah, to work together with Nosana as well. So uh, the things that are going on there can also help in various ways. So I already explained that they could at some point be the compute the GPU compute provider for AI inferences, but also, for example, right now, um, they are already running AI inferences um, on their test grid for Nosana. Uh, take for example the 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 whisper model that they're that they're running right now. So they're uh, they're transcribing lots of uh, podcasts right now um, on with with an open source AI model called Whisper. It's text to speech model. Um, but um, yeah, that model, even though it's pretty good, it's not it's not there yet, right? So they're still, especially for uh, um, subtitling and transcriptions. There's 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 many things. Uh, that will that, that will still be wrong in the output that Nosana is getting. So we might uh, loop effect force in there uh, to yeah to basically clean up the the results of the, of the AI inferences of the whisper jobs, for example, that we're currently running on Nosana and, and effect force might be used to uh, yeah to really um, yeah help structure that and clean that up. Um, that being said, if we really want to scale, so we could already do a couple of tests on V1, but I've been postponing that a bit because I really want to do this on version two where we can really scale it um, as, as yeah, as, um, as for example, the whisper jobs would already be thousands of jobs coming in on effect force. And yeah, I want to be able to scale that in a proper way. Yeah, that's, that's why I talk about grand design because you could say post a new model and then like just an automated way have uh, effect the workers evaluate the like the accuracy of this model like you could you you could literally have a basically uh unit tests on models yeah exactly right so i think suppose we're we're, we're thinking about that that missing piece in the middle the, the market right if if it's like an open market where anybody can create AI models, how how are you gonna know if those AI models are good? And maybe the AI, AI models are like the start, but not good enough, and they still need need humans in the loop, right? So you can either use it to basically rank AI models, like how good do, do they perform? Are they are they doing it properly? By by yeah, by putting some of the the results of the AI model also to effect force, so that they can be properly tested. By, by the works on effect force, or they can even be improved, and, and the AI model can be used as a starting point for the for the results, and then it can be uh, touched up and cleaned up by effect force. So that that's definitely part of the greater design that we've been thinking thinking of. So right now, I, I can understand that you see Nosana as a bit of a threat, but there's no danger in us abandoning effect. And in the future, I even think there's lots of possibilities for us to collaborate and to get tons of jobs on effect force. So really, the yeah, main like, thing now is the bottleneck, and that's getting V2 up and running. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. That's that's the bottleneck, and we need to we need to finish it and get it and get it up and running. Uh, and we're and we're working on that. And yeah, it's yeah, as you said, it's. Preferable if V two gets out because, as you said, the scalability issue. We don't want to. We don't want to yeah, get popular only, only then, for it to break. You know. 
for me, that, that's where, where the real fun will start, right? Because then we can really think about, okay, what kind of tests are we going to put put on here? What kind of companies are we going to try to partner with uh, to, uh, to, to help them with their AI models or providing AI models or structuring data sets in different ways? So that, yeah, I feel like if, if we take this this bottleneck, then uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're really uh, gonna see like uh, a fun and good period where where we can really test it and showcase the power of effect force. Exactly, and then also too to touch back, like you know that that open source AI model, the Whisper one, you know the the voice and the speech to text, how it's okay but not the greatest. I've seen the results firsthand. And if you think about it, we already mastered the subtitling and 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 all of that before when we were doing those uh, videos for that one big client on affected craft. Um, we already f had it down pat, you know, how it got uploaded and fixed, you know, by the workers, you know, even translators too. So we've already mastered that already on V1 or even the beta one, actually. Um, and it, was just it just shows, huh? I think it was just the beta, right? Yeah, just the beta one. And then, you know, we get that running in V2, then of course there can be connection and some overlap with that. Um, is that that's big right now, those those transcribing and, and stuff. On the V1, on, on the actual V1. Yeah. So, but it was a bit hard, right? Like, yeah. like we were hitting some of the limits and like the, the the throughput that we actually needed to really make that work without, like, us being overwhelmed with splitting up in different batches, keep keeping track of all the results, um, because we have we could only do small pieces at a time, um, on on the on the V one, right? Uh, so it was you... a bit too much work. That's one. And it's actually one of the reasons where we saw okay, this worked in beta one. Because it was centralized, so it's it's easy to scale. Everything that's centralized is easy to scale. That's not hard. The goal here is to make it decentralized and easy to scale. So we switched from like a scalable centralized solution to uh, a decentralized solution that works, but has some scalability problems. But the fact that that already works completely de de decentralized is pretty unique. Most of the um projects have that that want to achieve something like this have quite a lot of, se of centralized pe centralized pieces still and now i feel the next big step is to really have a scalable decentralized version 2 and then for example we can think about okay um, like rochelle said uh, we were already really good once at subtitling that let's let's get that back up right in a scalable way because, yeah, right now, this limit of 300, it's it's a nightmare, you know. And, you know, data sets are tens of thousands of pieces. And then even if you ask someone for a small sample and they give you a thousand, I have to break that up, you know, into 300 at a time pieces and then combine it back all together. And then, yeah, it's it's a nightmare. So that's one big roadblock for me, you know, on my end that, you know, if we when we solve it with the v2 it's going to be so much better because then you can really yeah, and we're also working on, on tools to make it easier for other developer data scientists um to actually yeah to put tasks on effect force in a scalable way so you could already do it through the ui right put some tests on th through the ui but if you really want to do like bigger tasks uh maybe multiple multiple components or multiple steps um yeah there the ui wasn't sufficient so you need tools outside of the ui developer tools to help you build that and that's basically what what we were doing for ourselves as well so now it's really exciting for me that we can also really yeah uh have have that structured and and an open source and open for other developers and data, data scientists to use yet we're still working on the documentation for those tools but that's also a really important part we need to, to document everything really well so that it's not just us that can manage campaigns and, and use effect force everybody should be able to to use effect force and then that's not even touching on the worker side, you know, all all that's going in on the worker side to make it just so easy and so attractive and, and known, you know, 
there's going to be a huge recruiting effort too as well. Um, but, you know, there's the thing. If there's not stuff up or it's not easy to use and there's a lot of hoops to go through, someone who's interested in, you know, side money, they're not going to do it. Um, and right now there's a huge, huge hole with all the problems that Amazon Mechanical Turk um, is is under right now. And I can't hide my smirk through my voice. Um, I love it. But the other platforms, you know, there's so many wait lists, people can't get in. And it's really still lacking all the things that need you know, workers need and, and people who want to just earn part-time need. So, you know, that's that's the other side of V2 that we're working on that is huge and that really takes, you know, 60% of my day um, building and, and, and crafting and stuff because, you know me, that's where my passion is big time. So, yes, that's that's what's going on. The worker side. Is going to be just as big as as you know the data scientist side. And I better stop there because I'll go on for hours about it. Um, Alice, Alan asked a quick question. Uh, can you put a time on when you expect Effect to be in the position Rochelle describes? Yeah, it's a similar question to like when is version two ready, right? Um, so like I said, uh, we're working hard on that, and uh, once we can give you uh, a better timeline, then we'll definitely do that. But um, yeah, it's progressing really good, and uh, yeah, we just need to make sure all the components in the in the cycle are ready, so that we can yeah that we, that we can really test and deploy version two, and that's when when, when the fun will start. So we'll, then that's when we can uh, and scale up the workers, scale up the tasks. Uh, I yeah I, I don't wanna one uh, he's asking are we six months or more away? I think like the first version of version two will will be definitely uh, be done before that, right? Um, so we're really working hard to to to, to get version two ready right because we've all been waiting with we we all have these ideas and things and we're all blocked by by um yeah by not having version two ready and not, and not have a scalable way of actually deploying tasks um in a in a proper way that doesn't take up all our times right um so once, once that's deployed and once we tested it and it works um yeah that's for me when when the fun will really start then we will We'll be onboarding more workers, uh, more tasks. Uh, we, we, we will be creating AI models. We will be structuring data. Um, and then we can really think about the next steps and where to go from there. I actually have to, to go in like two minutes. So if there's any urgent questions for me still. Hackathon. Oh, that's a good idea. When, when, when version two is ready um, and we have the tools ready, that would be a great opportunity again for another hackathon that would be great that's a good yeah idea. <laughs> that's also something i've been all wanting for a long time yeah a lot of things can happen i guess but uh, we need the, the v2 uh, i hope that uh gets done very well uh thanks uh i appreciate you stopping by lawrence uh it was, it's good to have your your input no worries and um yeah once once we are uh, further along and we know better timelines i will definitely provide them uh, uh with you uh that being said i have to i really have to go right now um i'll be working hard on the front end to get it ready and to actually be able to showcase you guys what we've been working on right uh just deploying a smart contract is not enough right you need you need all the things around around it to be actually to showcase the power of the smart contracts and i can't wait to to show that to, to you guys yeah i'm looking forward to it all right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Lawrence. Okay. That was a good doubt call. Are we done recording? Uh, well, there was another issue to discuss. Oh, um, oh shoot. Yeah, the um, the uh, um, pool. Yeah, but... It farm. Seems... Farm. Yeah, the farm. Uh, well, it seems, though, that... Um, I... I, I 
I'll probably need to ask Richard because I think he may be the only one interested. But what? Because I don't know if we want to have a vote on it or not. Um, uh, but yeah, so far all of us, uh, I think, agree that we should uh, limit more spending on uh, EFX for this quarter because it seems like the pool is not as much as like I feel it was bigger in the past, and it got smaller. So I don't think we should really uh, spend as much as we are now anymore. I, I agree. I agree. Um, and then, but two, I'm I'm going to be honest. I'm biased on it. I don't like the BSC side of things. You know, for me, it's it's a huge headache. Right. There um, was. Um, I was working with Jesse on uh, trying to set up a. Uh, rewards for the defy box pool however there is kind of an issue figuring out how to get um a multi-sig account to claim uh, uh the rewards and i think it kind of like slowed things down so uh but f going for now i think it's best to just not have farm rewards for the time being but like yeah like the other thing about Binance Smart Chain is like it seems like it's not really benefiting us all that much anymore, other than just having another, like, like going back to Nosana. I think part of the reason is just we're on EOS, and even though EOS is like functionally good, it's like it's not popular, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and the thing is, it EOS, it it's you know the transaction fees and. And the, um, I guess the the permissioning system that EOS has, I really like. I wish Solana had that, you know. Um, but yeah, the, it's the BSC stuff. To be honest, I've hated it from the beginning. It was all one person's idea to get all on the BSC train, and it was terrible because it was a terrible person that suggested that. Um, and while it did help it easy for like workers to just quickly make a, a wallet and account and, and get on the platform, you know, that part I liked. Um, but V2, we're going to kind of steer away from that and the worker accounts will be EOS based um, because we're going to do like the free EOS accounts. The only way BSC will be used with V2 will be like a requester account, you know. Just to, just to make it easier, but yeah, I, I I'm not in agreement with it, and I agree with what Alan said. To do it properly, it needs to be a vote, and that's true because we are a DAO and we do make those decisions. So I think um, well, someone has to put a proposal up for it. Well, yeah, it's more like it's more like someone has to write the proposal, and so usually it's Jesse, right? So. Uh, yeah, we could ask him to do it. Um, uh, uh, but like, I think there's only like a few days left right, in the in the cycle. So yeah, and then I'll, after I'll that, send it's, it's, the it's two weeks, right? So we would be already ending the the farm without it continuing. But I don't yeah, know I'll, I'll if it's home. yeah. Like I guess you can send him a message, like um. Uh, it, yeah, it would be good to have a vote, uh, but I don't know if he will make the timing. Since now, I'm always, uh, I'm always now, you know, moving the cycle forward. That's like that's another thing. Um, like this is how I can tell you guys are very swamped with Nosana, and it's like small things. Like when I asked Jesse to help uh, write a guide on what to do, like uh, how to move the cycle forward when there is a proposal, for example. And it's like I, I don't really get much info. That like so that's like like it's small things you can that you can tell that, which is not to say that I'm against it because Nosana. I think, as we talked to Florence, I think there is so much synergy. I I'm not, it's I'm very understanding, but we can we can tell the 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 consequences of working on two projects, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, the thing is, is with them, they are very not the greatest at writing documentation and guides. <laughs> and 
that's that was a struggle even with the effect stuff. Um, well, I think it should be but, like uh, encouraged because that's how you can allocate allocate it to other people. Because I'm fully open oh, yeah. to moving each cycle forward, so Jesse doesn't have to do it. But I, I need to know how to do it. Yeah, same here. I don't even know how to do it. If I knew how to do it, I'd do it. I have to make myself learn it. I guess that's that's something I'm I'm gonna go over that guide and. Well, the, the when it's empty, it's wrote. easy. You just do two contract yeah. <laughs> calls. The 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 question I have is, how do you do the ATP stuff? Yeah, I want to know too. I think I'm gonna put that as as my need to do pet project and stuff and get that going. Right, but uh, it's yeah, we definitely see that it's uh, like V two will be big. In the sense that we can branch off to do other things, because V two is like the necessary core f core thing to improve. Because you you mentioned it's like the three hundred job limit per batch. That that's really tiny. Yeah, it's awful. It's awful. And then on top of that, okay, fine, I'll do a test and put up ten tasks with two repetitions. And like repetitions also play into the three hundred task limit. So. I'll just do a little bit. Okay, I'll put 20 tasks total, right? Oh my God, then it breaks. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. So it's hard to like run some tests on some things like right now on the platform as part of, you know, the work I'm doing for like V2. It's, it's super difficult. I fight with it like nonstop. But, um, yeah, I just was like, come on, let's <laughs> let's let's put V2 on 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 testnet real quick, <laughs> you know, and start <laughs> I can't wait to have it on testnet when we're like really trying it and things. Um yeah. It's it's a lot. And I I'm not going to lie, you know, there's there's a lot of things that I get frustrated with, you know, with it while we're waiting for the V2 stuff. It's it, it, some of it's frustrating at times, um, but it all goes in towards, you know, the building stuff. You know me, you know where my passion is, and it's the work and the workers and, and getting that done. And I, you know, I just can't wait. I just can't wait. And that's that's like the big part of my day. But yeah, like it, some stuff, you know, we have to juggle like scheduling on the calendar you know between okay I'm, are you available to talk this time no because i've got a meeting with the other call okay so then it's later in the day or it's the next day you know so i mean there are times where calendars and scheduling conflicts like you know interfere with it but it, it's we're making it work at least there's so many on on so many people like on both sides of it so we can see each other's schedules you know from one project to the next and you know that part helps um we use a lot of the same you know communication tools so that part helps um i could see it being very difficult if it was not so intertwined with the same tools and the same people then that would be a big hassle but i mean for me it's working well fine i mean but also at the same time, the whole time I've been in effect, I've also had other other things going on in, in real life too. Um, I've never worked less than three or four jobs at a time. So yeah, my 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 times are, are very scheduled. I'm I'm always all over the place. I wish I just had two, but I have a lot more. So, but yeah, I will uh, just back to the um, proposal for the farm. I will get with Jesse on that and hopefully we can get a proposal up today or tomorrow because that'll work, right? If it's up today or tomorrow. Yeah. The cycle starts in two days. Okay. So we'll get that up and then I'll also carve out a time to work with him too on, on how 
the cycle changes goes and with ATPs and stuff because I need to know how to do this. Oh, hi, Guard member. You need to know how to do this too. All, all, all of us do. Any one of us should be able to jump in who's on high guard on a multi stake and be able to do it. Um, and you're right. That has gone by the wayside, and that's very important. It's like one of the main important things our DAO does. So, yeah, lately there's been a few proposals because I don't see anything worth drafting in the proposal for. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, well, I've got, I've got the, the, um, one coming up. I've got it in draft mode on my computer. I don't have it draft mode on, on, uh, on the proposal side. I should probably add it up. But it's, uh, with that onboarding committee, um, and the funds for that for people for when we have that going, when we do the big, you know, worker recruitment and onboarding and support, uh, when V2 goes. It's been a little quiet about that right now because, you know, I'm waiting on the guys to get their tech stuff finished um, because I plan on launching all of that before V2 launches. So, um, yeah, because that needs to happen before the platform launches. I need to have people trained and ready in all the, the FAQs and all the documents and stuff ready with these people from our committee and then... That way, as people trickle in when when V two is starting, um, everything will be set. Um, and also, there's also going to be a like a onboarding, marketing, like recruiting waitlist thing for V two coming out as well. Um, that's going to be the start of the buzz. So when you guys see um, a uh, a waitlist sign up thing pop up on Twitter and go. That's when you know, okay, things are rolling and things are about to go. That that'll be that'll be your clue. There's gonna be so much I don't wanna say hype. I hate that word hype. But that's when it's really gonna kick off. Yes, hype. I see the the thing. Yes, Alan. That's that's when you guys are gonna see me online twenty four seven, back in form, how I used to be, and going and I'm gonna be all over media and I don't like it, but I'm so excited I have to convey all of it out. So yes, hype. I will be the big hype onboarding person. I yeah, even are, I have so this, uh, you envision the, do you think the open empathic uh, task will be uh, like ready uh, as a pipeline by then? Yeah. Yeah. That's the big plan with V2 is to have the open empath stuff be a big part of, of what's on the platform when V2 goes. Um, that's going to be like the big shiny project. And then there's going to be like all kinds of, you know, other smaller tasks and stuff. The thing I'm working on with the uh, product review text, um, there's going to be some social media things um, because honestly, it seems like for a while all effect has been is, you know, the, the tweets and it's annoying. Um, but yeah, the big thing on V2 is going to be the open impact and then a bunch of different varied tasks because it's also building the big workforce. So we're going to have being built um, the workforce ready to take advantage of like the survey work that was so good on MTurk that is not around anymore. Um, we need to get all the demographics and and whatnot in a big workforce on effect to be able to get the uh, universities and like the polling places and stuff um, to come to our platform to use it for that, aside from all the AI training and things. Um, that's my big, big push is because there's a huge hole in the microtasking world right now that we need to fill. So we'll be doing, you know, that type of work on the platform as well as, you know, the, the data science stuff. Um, because everyone who's left MTurk, they're still, you know, like prolific and all that. It's, it's still not the easiest thing. So, um, 
we just need the numbers on the workforce to be able to get that work over. So that that's that's my uh, vision in in what I'm doing right now with prep for the V2. It's not to attract workers just to do the data science stuff, but also to fill the hole with, you know, Appen and Prolific and Nevo and and all of that those places cuz now the big re requesters that used to be on MTurk before MTurk screwed everything up, um, which I'm glad they did, they have to go to four or five different platforms to get their work done by people. And it's awful. So, yeah. The data science, the Oracles, uh, set us apart from the rest, though, I think. Exactly, exactly. So how cool would it be for one platform that, that caters to all of it, all sides of it? Yeah, it'll be good That's to have cool. it as that. Though, um, as you, I think it was you who mentioned it uh, on the Open Empathic, their Discord is not very active. So it seems like uh, not that many. Like, I don't think they've given an update so far. So maybe you should give them an update in the group chat. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I need to do that. Uh, because it has been like I think two months now, so uh, yeah, a little bit. We don't want them thinking you've, you've just ghosted them. Yeah, yeah. No, I I will give them the update on that, and I think Jesse's gonna give them the update about the the template. So yeah, I guess add that to the reminders you're gonna send them. Yep. But yeah, like uh, as as discussed the. The Nosana and Effect Network, and then I think if we if we if we combine that like with Leon, which is basically they they actually create the models, like I think this can be a very good uh, combination. So I'm hoping there's just a lot of interaction. Well, me too. I I see so many different avenues where it complements both. You know. It just it, going back to the bottleneck we got right now. It's right, yeah, and yeah, and to to establish that relationship, we gotta help them with what you know they want to do. So exactly, exactly. So along the lines of cutting EFX spending, we we will need to be ready to pay for these tasks and subsidize them, the open empathic ones, because uh, initially we're gonna need to pay for it. But I think it's worth paying for these types of tasks because they really show off uh, everything important about Effect Network. Oh yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of it's coming from that that AI development fund that we set aside. Right. The resigners on yeah yeah I want to devote a lot of VFX to that and subsidize it to really get it going. And then too, I mean. It doesn't stop with open empath. Leon is so big. They have so many different things. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm advocating like we need a guy that just like his job is helping Leon with stuff in general. That's like the general definition. And by helping them, it shows like every every all the help will involve effect network in some way, right? And it's just like not only does it create the samples that say other developers can look at as examples, it establishes a good relationship. And also, like, a uh, connection there for helping solving all their problems. So that's why I'm a strong advocate for expanding. Yeah, me too. And still, I mean, that'll even help, like, all of the stuff that's on Hugging Face. I still want to do that that thing where it connects to Hugging Face and all those data sets. And we just improve all those things and have it on there. Because Hugging Face is big, too. Yeah, that was David's proposal in the, on Pomelo. Uh, hopefully, in the next few months, he's back from his leave. I can also yeah. start working on things. Oh, cool. All right, so I think uh, we covered everything, this alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good one. I'm glad Lawrence topped in. All right, so I'm going to cut the recording then.